Okay, all right. Sorry, we have to read another chapter because apparently there's 21 chapters. So we have to read chapter 18 tonight, and then tomorrow I have to read chapters 19 and 20 and 21. All right, so we got one more chapter to go. It's just a few pages long. Hold that thought. <coughs> Excuse me. So sorry about that. All right. We landed at Cressy Field after at, after nightfall. As soon as Dr. Chase stopped, uh, stepped out of his sop with camel, Annabeth ran to him and gave him a huge hug. Dad, you flew. You shot. Oh, my God. That was the most amazing thing I've ever seen. Her father blushed. Well, not bad for a middle-aged mortal, I suppose. But the celestial bronze bullets, how did you get those? Ah, well, you did leave quite a few half-blood weapons in your room in Virginia the last time you left. Annabeth looked down, embarrassed. I noticed Dr. Chase was very careful not to say ran away. I decided to try melting some down to make bullet casings, he continued. Just a little experiment. He said it like it was no big deal, but he had a gleam in his eye. I could understand all of a sudden why Athena, a goddess of crafts and wisdom, had taken a liking to him. He was an excellent mad scientist at heart. Annabeth, Dad faltered. Or Dad, Annabeth faltered. Annabeth, Percy, Talia interrupted. Her voice was urgent. She and Artemis were kneeling at Zoe's side binding the huntress's wounds. Annabeth and I ran over to help, but there wasn't much we could do. We had no ambrosia or nectar. No regular medicine would help. It was dark, but I could see that Zoe didn't look good. She was shivering, and the faint glow that usually hung around her was fading. Can't you heal her with magic, I asked Artemis. I mean, you're a goddess. Artemis looked troubled. Life is a fragile thing, Percy. If the fates will, if the, fates will the string be cut, there's little I can do, but I can try. She tried to set her hand on Zoe's side, but Zoe gripped her wrist. She looked into the goddess's eyes, and some kind of understanding passed between them. Have I served thee well? Zoe whispered. With great honor, Artemis said softly, the finest of my attendants. Zoe's face relaxed. Rest, at last. I can try to heal the poison, my brave one. But in that moment, I knew it wasn't just the poison that was killing her. It was her father's final blow. Zoe had known all along that the oracle's prophecy was about her. She would die by a parent's hand, and yet she had taken the quest anyway. She had chosen to save me, and Atlas's fury had broken her inside. She saw Talia and took her hand. I'm sorry we argued, Zoe said. We could have been sisters. It's my fault, Talia said, blinking hard. You were right about Luke, about heroes, about men, about everything. Perhaps not all men, Zoe murmured. She smiled weakly at me. Do you still have the sword, Percy? I couldn't speak, but I brought out Riptide and put the pen in her hand. She grasped it contentedly. You spoke the truth, Percy Jackson. You are nothing like... like Hercules. I am honored that you carry this sword. A shudder ran through her body. Zoe, I said. Stars, she whispered. I can see the stars again, my lady. A tear trickled down Artemis's cheek. Yes, my brave one, they are beautiful tonight. Stars, Zoe repeated her eyes fixed on the night sky, and she did not move again. Talia lowered her head. Annabeth gulped down a sob, and her father put his hands on her shoulders. I watched as Artemis cupped her hand above Zoe's mouth and spoke a few words in ancient Greek. A silvery wisp of smoke exhaled from Zoe's lips and was caught in the hand of the goddess. Zoe's body shimmered and disappeared. Artemis stood, said a kind of blessing, breathed into her cupped hand and released the silver dust to the sky. It flew up, sparkling and vanished. For a moment, I didn't see anything different. Then Annabeth gasped. Looking at the sky, I saw the stars were brighter now. They had made a pattern I had never noticed before. A gleaming constellation that looked a lot like a girl's figure. A girl with a bow running across the sky. Let the world honor you, my huntress, Artemis said. Live forever in the stars. How cool is that? She got her own constellation. That's awesome. It was easy to say our goodbye. It wasn't easy to say our goodbyes. The thunder and lightning were still boiling over Mount Tampalopasis in the north. Artemis was so upset that she flickered with silver light. This made me nervous because if she suddenly lost control and appeared in her fully divine form, we would disintegrate by just by looking at her. I must go to Olympus immediately, Artemis said. I will not be able to take you, but I will send help. The goddess set her hand on Annabeth's shoulder. You are brave beyond measure, my girl. You will do what is right. Then she looked quizzically at Talia, as if she weren't sure what to make of the young daughter of Zeus. Talia seemed reluctant to look up, but something made her, and she held the goddess's eyes. I wasn't sure what passed between them, but Artemis's gaze softened with sympathy. Then she turned to me. You did well, she said, for a man. 
I wanted to protest, but then I realized that was the first time she hadn't called me a boy. She mounted her chariot, which began to glow. We averted our eyes. There was a flash of silver and the goddess was gone. Well, Dr. Chase sighed. She was impressive, though I must say I still prefer Athena. Annabeth tur turned toward him. Dad, I, I'm sorry that... Shh. He hugged her. Do what you must, my dear. I know this isn't easy for you. His voice was a little shaky, but he gave Annabeth a brave smile. Then I heard the whoosh of large wings. Three pegasi descended through the fog. Two white-winged horses and a pure black one. Blackjack, I called. Yo, boss, he called. You managed to stay alive okay without me? It was rough, I admitted. I brought Guido and Pork Pie with me. How you doing? The other two pegasi spoke in my mind. Blackjack looked over at me with concern, then checked out Dr. Chase, Talia, and Annabeth. Any of these goons you want us to stampede? Nah, I said aloud. These are my friends. We need to get to Olympus pretty fast. Blackjack looked over at me. Nah, yeah, sorry. No problem, Blackjack said. Except for the mortal over there. Hope he's not going. I assured him Dr. Chase was not. The professor was staring open mouthed at the pegasi. Fascinating, he said. Such maneuverability. How does the wingspan compensate for the weight of the horse's body, I wonder? Blackjack cocked his head. What? Why, if the British had had these pegasi and the cavalry charges in the Crimea, Dr. Chase said, the charge of the light brigade? Dad, Annabeth interrupted. Dr. Chase blinked. He looked at his daughter and managed to smile. I'm sorry, my dear. I know you must go. He gave her one last awkward, well-meaning hug as she turned to climb aboard the Pegasi Guido. Dr. Chase called, Annabeth, I know, I know San Francisco is a dangerous place for you, but please remember you always have a home with us. We will keep you safe. Annabeth didn't answer, but her eyes were as red as she turned away. Dr. Chase started to say more, then apparently thought the better of it. He raised his hand in a sad farewell and trudged away through the dark field. Talia and Annabeth and I mounted our Pegasi. Together we soared over the bay and flew toward the eastern hills. Soon San Francisco was only a glittering crescent behind us, with an occasional flicker of lightning in the north. Talia was so exhausted she fell asleep on Pork Pie's back. I knew she, was, she had to be really tired to sleep in the air, despite her fear of heights. But she didn't have much to worry about. Her Pegasi flew with a ease, adjusting himself every once in a while, so Talia stayed safely on his back. Annabeth and I flew along side by side. Your dad seems so cool, I told her. It was too dark to see her expression. She looked back, even though California was far behind us now. I guess so, she said. We've been arguing for so many years. Yeah, I said. You told me. You think it was lying about that? It sounded like a challenge, but a pretty half-hearted one. It was like she was asking it of herself. I didn't say you were lying. It's just he seems okay. You're stepping on to it, too. Maybe um, they've gotten cooler since you last saw them. She hesitated. They're still in San Francisco, Percy. I can't live so far from camp. I didn't want to ask my next question. I was scared to know the answer, but I asked it anyway. So what are you going to do now? We flew over a town, an island of lights in the middle of the dark. It whisked by so fast it might have been an airplane. I don't know, she admitted, but thank you for rescuing me. Hey, no big deal. We're friends. Did you believe I was dead? Never. She hesitated. Neither is Luke, you know. I mean, he isn't dead. I stared at her. I didn't know if she was cracking under the stress or what. Annabeth, that fall was pretty bad. There's no way. He isn't dead, she insisted. I know. The same way you knew about me. That comparison didn't make me too happy. The towns were zipping by faster now. Islands of light thicker together. The whole landscape below was a glittering carpet. Dawn was close. The eastern sky was turning gray. And up ahead, a huge white and yellow glow spread out before us. The lights of New York. How's that for speedy, boss? Blackjack bragged. We get extra hay for breakfast or what? You the man, Blackjack, I told him. Or the horse, I mean. <sighs> you don't believe me about Luke, Annabeth said, but we'll see him again. He's in trouble, Percy. He's under Cronus' spell. I didn't feel like arguing, though it made me mad. How could she still have any feelings for that creep? How could she possibly make excuses for him? He deserved that fall. He deserved... Okay, I'll say it. He deserved to die. Unlike Bianca. Unlike Zoe. Luke couldn't be alive. It wouldn't be fair. There it is, Talia's voice. She'd woken up. She was pointing toward Manhattan, which was quickly zooming into view. It started. What started, I ask? Then I looked to where she was pointing. High above the Empire State Building, Olymp Olympus had its own island of light, a floating mountain ablaze with torches and braziers, white marble palaces gleaming in the early morning air. The winter solstice, Talia said, the Council of the Gods. All right, tomorrow we'll start off with chapter 19. The gods vote.
how to kill us. Let's festive. All right. Bye till tomorrow, guys.